Yep. Yep, that's it. The average policeman, he, uh... He comes from the upper lower class or the lower middle class and, uh, perhaps he, um... Perhaps someone in his family is a cop or perhaps he, um... He's got the idea from watching TV. Um, he's looking for financial security. He wants a nice paying job. He wants to work out of doors. He wants a pension, a profession. But most of all, he, uh, he wants to help people. You can ask any police officer why he first decided to join the force and he, uh, he's likely to tell you he wanted to help people. That's it. It's that simple. That's the psychology. He goes to the police academy and he is told that he is going to be helping people. And he is taught how to what? How to help people. He's taught life-saving techniques, how to defuse an argument. He is told that he is going to be preserving the fabric of society, preserving life and property, maintaining the peace, uh, in short, doing all noble purposes. He gets out of the academy out into the streets of his city and he discovers instead that he's regulating human behavior and that his presence in doing so is bitterly resented and he's shocked. The police officer's reaction to this is absolute shock that, that the citizen that he was sworn and trained to protect should suddenly resent his presence and he does and it's resented rightly. After all, we all bridle let control, do we not? The policeman, he has great difficulty assimilating this knowledge. And it's because of this difficulty that he becomes a bit cynical. He uh, becomes a bit hardened. The policeman cannot permit every emotional contact on the job to drain him. He has to have emotion reserved for his life, for his family. And it's actually that hardness and that cynicism that permits him to cope with what he encounters on the job and, and therefore do his job uh, efficiently. The public does not uh, understand, cannot understand everything a policeman sees, everything he encounters. And, and basically, to a certain degree, does not even understand the policeman's role in society. So what do we have? On the part of the police, we have, you know, the, uh, the insularity grows, the secretiveness grows, the parochialism grows. Society does not understand the policeman, and the policeman is shocked to discover that society does not appreciate him sufficiently, and they are driven apart. So we have the outside world, and we have the police world. We experience our reality, and the real world experiences its reality. So it's terribly difficult for the for any average citizen to actually understand the complexities that are involved in doing police work in New York City. In my dream, I am walking down a deserted street. A street Lost, lost somewhere in a rolling part of the city, lost in the bluish and darkness of early evening. There is no noise, no sound, not even the faintest sense of traffic. In total silence, I heard myself saying something. Gentle and desperate. Call your command. Report to your command. Call dispatch by telephone. Acknowledge. Tentful. Repeat message. Stand by. Verify address. Possible crime. Shots fired. 
police officer holding suspect. Assist police officer. Ten four. Occupying suspicious vehicle. License plate check. Verify stolen. Vehicle is reported stolen. Warrant check. Shows an active warrant. Past robbery. Past burglary. Past larceny. Past assault. Child abuse to the past. Other crimes in the past. Robbery in progress. Burglary in progress. Larceny in progress. Assault in progress. Child abuse in progress. Other crimes in progress. Second call for ambulance. Assist ambulance. Precinct assignment available. Acknowledge. Ten to four. Unusual incident. Non-crime incident. Cancel. Verification of arrest. Unit to hospital. Need additional unit. Call your command. Report to your command. Acknowledge. Other interim status. Other interim status. Other interim status. Yeah. Other interim status. Assault in progress. Repeat message. Assault in progress. Please specify. 1034, domestic assault in progress. Address is 229105461119 Street. Do you read? Negative 1088. Vehicle in pursuit of another assignment. We got a level one for a 1034 at 229 Street. Do you read? 1081, 1004. 1090, Frank 2. Domestic incident report. Prepared. Unfounded report. Of domestic violence. Unfounded. Unable to gain entrance. Going on arrival. Non con corrected. 1098. I was sent out. I don't know, he wouldn't give us a name. We told him vagrancy. No, no, he, he was pretty belligerent about the whole thing. many details regarding the incident. I don't know any details regarding the incident. White male, 6'2", 165 pounds, bald, red jersey, shorts. Yeah. So let me ask you this, uh, what exactly is he suspected of?
DNA. Right. And they still haven't found the other half. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll hold them. Nah, nah, he hasn't said anything about a lawyer. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep him isolated. What is he doing now? I, I don't know. When I was back there last, he was sleeping. I feel like I got a deep belief in what's right or what's wrong. I feel like I've always had this feeling in me that there are bad people, evil people in the world. People out there doing harm and killing people and that they need to be stopped and that, uh, that maybe that it was my job to stop the bad people. I look at myself in the mirror. I get up in the morning and I stare at my reflection. Who is this man? What is he capable of? I ask myself these questions. We all have these questions. Do I have evil inside of me? Maybe. But there's a difference between... Hello. So we got a domestic situation here. Apparently one lady's putting dents in another lady's door. So we had to check it out and hopefully resolve the situation. She's not gonna answer. I can hear her moving around in there. Hello? It's the police. Would you open up, please? Hi, I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, oh no, no, I don't want any camera. No camera. Can you please open up? Did you hit the door? Yes, I did. You shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do. And this is what I hit it with. And believe me, if I would have been out here tonight with it, I would have gotten it with it. You can't do that. Oh, I have no intention of telling you. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what? I'm going to do. What is this? It's a flat iron. It's one of those old time flat irons, and I ain't playing. I understand that, but you shouldn't do that. You can't do oh, but that. They can't it's not right. Do it. I you gotta take that in front of the manager. Yeah, huh? We told you what to do. You go talk to the manager. I'm not that bad. We don't want no to be bothering you. Difference anybody. to me around here. Well, Whatever they do, anything they well, why do, don't you just, I'm doing it. Okay, but why don't you do what do we told me. them to get I'm a summons? So why don't you do what we told them to do and go get a summons for them? I'm not taking no nonsense from them or anybody else in here, see? You know because happen. I didn't do but a single gonna, thing, and you know, I'm not going to. If you keep causing problems, they're going to throw you out of the building. I didn't start it. I'm going to ask you who started it. She started it. And when they throw me out, she's going to pay for everything. Well, how are you going to solve the problem if you don't? The marks in her door are going to be the marks in her damn body. Well, then you're going to get arrested. Then I have to be arrested. Well, if that's what you want. Nothing we'll scares happy. me, mister. Nothing scares me. I see that. Just like nothing scares them when they get ready to pick okay. on me. I'm okay. not going to take All right. it. Can you lay off it? For tonight, no, I'm not promising to lay off at any time. I'm not promising anybody I'm letting anything rest. All right, she's not, she's not gonna promise. She doesn't want to promise. All right, don't promise. I'm not gonna promise. Don't promise. I'm not gonna promise because I'm not gonna go back on my word. Well, we wouldn't want you to do so that. Why don't you just make it a maybe then? Could you make it a maybe? No, I'm not gonna make it no maybe. But what about maybe? Could you make it an almost maybe? No, I'm not gonna make it no almost maybe. Well, all right, well, just, just take it easy for tonight. No, I'm not taking nothing easy. Well, if we come back, we will come back, and we'll take you down to the precinct, and we'll solve the problem that way, okay? Thank you. The marks in our door are going to be the marks in our damn body. Nice. Sharon. Yeah. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Daniels. Present. All right, look, we got two stakeouts. The 167. The 176. 
44 Charlie's got the mail. And a reminder to remember safe driving. You come in, first you gotta form the desk sergeant, all right? Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. In the locker room, we don't wanna see any, uh, any more of the dice rolling, okay? Uh, oh, that that good. 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 serious good. business. 1185 Anderson. They've been seen milling about in the area again. Talking about a Volkswagen red New York plates. 1185 Anderson. You see them in the area, you keep your eyes open. Item A. You make an arrest, you gotta remember to make out that warrant for them. You go to court during the day, you gotta fill out the survey they're running for 30 days, right? Uh, okay. I don't know about working three days for free by June 30th, right? Whoa, whoa. I got something here. There's supposedly a guy in our command wanted by the 28 for attempted murder with a gun. He's supposedly living at 1240 Walden Avenue. So let's make a couple of stops up in the area, see if we can't come up with him. <laughs> Last <laughs> item. <laughs> Last item is concerning personal appearance. We don't want you walking around looking like a bunch of blue gorillas, you know what I mean? Be neat and clean. Yeah, be neat and clean. Keep your uniform clean, well pressed and in good repair. Keep your shoes shine. Keep your uniform securely buttoned. The collar button may be left unbuttoned. But all other buttons should be securely fastened. Wear your cap squarely on your head with the center of the visor directly over your nose. This cap must be worn when you're on foot patrol, traffic posts, or details. But maybe remove when riding in department vehicles. Non-uniform articles must not show above your uniform collar. Undershirts, neck chains, and all of the non-uniform items should not be visible. We're here so it's neatly groomed and conforms to the shape of the head. Conforms to the shape of the head. Keep sideburns and mustaches neatly trimmed. Keep fingernails neatly trimmed. Do not wear jewelry while performing duties in uniform. Do not chew gum, use tobacco in any form or hold toothpicks while in uniform. When authorized to perform duty in civilian clothing, wear attire appropriate for assignment. Yeah, appropriate attire for the assignment. For the assignment. Clearly state your rank, name, shield number, and command to anyone who may request it. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone. Allow the person ample time to look this information. Ample time. Be courteous and respectful. Fuck you. All right. That's it. That's the end of the story. Let's be careful out there. Come on. Let's go. Ronnie and I started dating in high school. We were neighborhood kids. We were like our friends. Neither one of us really knew what we wanted to do with ourselves, but we both knew if we wanted to move out of my parents' house, we had to find some kind of jobs. I remember one time, Ronnie mentioned something about maybe wanting to be a cop. And to be honest, I left. I didn't think he was serious. And on top of that, I didn't really like the idea. I had cousins, I had a sense of what the job was, I didn't really want that for my life. A few days later, we talked about it, and he told me he changed his mind. Uh, I was pregnant. He said what was important was 
getting a good job, having money, raising a family. A few years later, we've got one daughter together and another one on the way. And Ronnie is, uh, I mean, frustrated would be an understatement. We're fighting. I'm unhappy, he's unhappy, everything is really stressful. And then one day, he just loses it and punches a hole in the wall. He told me, he said he felt uh, worthless, that he was embarrassed by his job. My brother was in sanitation, so when I was pregnant, he pulled some strings, got Ronnie on a truck doing overnights. It was good paying work. Plus, it's what my brother had done, so it was really hard for me to have to hear all this and not be at least a little bit hurt. So when this all came out, I knew what I had to do, what he had to do. Sure, it was his job to take care of the family, but it was also my job to support him in doing it. To stand by his side and let him know, whatever it is, he has my blessing. And once I made the decision, it wasn't difficult for me. Not at all. Neither one of us hasn't looked back since. He's my man in blue. Right beneath the surface. 
in my dreams, even at night, I'm angry in my dreams, all night long, right, like fuck up all people, you know what I mean? So the way it happened was the suspect had sort of barricaded himself in this um, little back room. So me and my partner, we went back and uh, it was really pretty dark in there overall. And so, you know, it's kind of a little hard to get an eye on the guy at first. But, uh, you know, anyway, um, so we get back there and right away he's shooting. And I mean, you know, the thing was, the only reason I knew he was shooting was because I could see it happening. I could see the flashes, right? But at the same time, it was confusing to me because uh, I didn't hear. I couldn't hear the gun going off. And because of this, I started saying, I was saying to myself, how many? You know, like, when did it start? How many? And at this point, I felt really wide awake. I guess I was pretty juiced from what was happening and having all those chemicals pumping through my body, adrenaline, whatever. And my eyes, they started to adjust to the room. And the first thing I saw, the first thing that I really saw was uh, the barrel of the gun. And uh, my eyes just kind of locked onto that, you know, like, uh, like tunnel vision, like something you see in the movies or whatever. And uh, everything else just started to slow down. And like, I felt like I can actually see the bullets coming out of that gun. And uh, like, you know, slow motion or whatever. And when I'm noticing all this in uh, slow motion, I start getting these thoughts in the uh, some of them nonsensical thoughts, some random stuff, but the one thought that I hung on to, the one thought was that I knew I could no longer be afraid uh, because it's a test, you know? Uh, the first shooting on the job, it's, most people don't see it, but it's a test, and until that day, until that day, you don't know. And uh, now I do. And uh, I also knew that I had to take this guy out before somebody got hurt, before me, before my partner, before somebody else got hurt, you know? And, uh, and now knowing this, uh, I was totally calm. Like the fear that just left me. Like there was no room for the emotion of fear to be, uh, to be in the situation. So it just left me and then I, I saw a flash and I heard nothing, but I knew I let off a round and I just aimed right above the barrel and uh, one shot and then it stopped flashing that was coming from that direction stopped and I waited and a couple of seconds later it was like time started back up to normal again and this guy I mean I didn't even know anything about him before I ended his life I didn't know his side of the story. I didn't even get a good look at his face before I pulled the trigger. It was just, that was the situation. Uh, the paramedics came, they cut off his clothes, worked on him. And in the end, he died right there. I was like 15 feet away from him when it happened. I mean, you know, that was my first shooting on the job. Don't talk about it. Don't think about it. Don't hesitate. Just do the job. Keep the animals in 
This is another night in the zoo. Let them know the shit stops here. Put them back in the cage. Fuck them. Take control. They inconvenience They do something. Take them out quick. Save yourself the trouble later on. They wise all. They push you. Fucking yoke them. They got bandanas and arrest them. They run to rage. Fuck them. Cuff them up and hand them off to someone else. Not on my board. Don't need them. Not on my board. Not here. Not here. You're facing the front. In front of the line. Shit. You gotta recognize it right away. These guys on the streets. These are the guys. These are the guys you need to keep an eye on. These people are pieces of shit. Shit. These people are fucking skull. You ain't even barely human. You take this job. You do what you gotta do. This is your job. Do your job. Don't let your job do you. First and foremost. That's the whole thing. That's all it is. It is the way it is. It ain't a popularity contest out here. They want to talk? Fucking push you. People don't like us. People don't like us. You gotta realize these people. These people you're dealing with on the street. You're not dealing with rational people. They're not competent to what? Sit down and discuss. It's a shame of the man. So what? Fuck them. They know us. They know what the score is. They know us. They know them. They say hello, and we say hello. And it's like a little game. But they wise off your fucking yo. They talk back. You shut up. Wait, wait, wait. It's simple. The thing about being a cop is it's a 24-7 kind of a job. You got to develop what we call street eyes. Always being aware, always keeping an eye out on your surroundings like that. Practically anything can happen on the streets, but you got to know what you're looking for. When you're a cop, you can't be distracted by all this, like all this life, like all this around us. You can't be off looking into the trees, at the birds or whatever. You can't have your head in the clouds. It takes nonstop focus. When a cop walks into a room, we see things you would never see. And even if you did see them, you wouldn't even know what you were looking at. Situations that seem the most unlikely to be dangerous are actually the ones that can erupt into unexpected violence. Some of the most tragic incidents come from the smallest things like a, like a traffic stop. Because you don't know what you're stopping, right? You don't know what you're getting yourself into. A dope bust, you know. Weapons, maybe, resistance, probably. But when you walk up to a car, with a little old lady behind the wheel, and she pulls out a sawed-off shotgun on you, she's the joker in the deck. The thing is, is to never assume somebody's gonna go along peaceful. You always gotta assume they're gonna fight you off like Satan. I don't hey. fucking believe this. Where the hell you been, huh? What do you mean, where have I been? You want to tell me where the fuck you been? What, what the are you, hell what are you, are you doing talking coming about? here with the camera after I haven't seen you in days? What the fuck it's are you something doing? for work. Really? Something do you think work. I'm stupid? Huh? Do you think I don't know? Of course I don't think you're stupid. Do, no, uh, what? No, 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 well, no, no, no. No, what? Really? What are you talking? No, what? <sighs> and, and you got a camera Can you not make here? a scene here, never... please? Can you not make a scene? Why? Is it not the right time? When the hell is the right time? Anytime's the right time. Anytime's the right time for you. Fucking shit. You think I give a fuck about that? I don't give a fuck about that. Can, can you calm down for a second? Can you just calm down for a second, please? You Tell me, I'm not breaking any of my promises. No, I'm not breaking any of my promises. I would never break a promise to you. What are you talking you got about? Commi- you got commitments, you got responsibilities. I know my responsibilities are too. Oh I have my responsibilities. God. No, 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 no. Ronnie, of course I, I have responsibilities. I don't want to hear it, okay? I'm your family. You gotta listen to me, yeah, you're I'm my family. I'm all you got, and I'll tell you what, I'm just about finished. Okay. Finished with what? I'm finished with you, with all the bullshit, with finished the fucking with me? job. You're finished with yeah, me? Yeah, I'm finished what with you. What does that mean? What yeah, get the fuck do? out of here. I want you out. I'm finished with you and all your bullshit. Get the fuck out. Get out right now. Get out. Get this out of my, my house, house, Ronnie. Too. No, 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 no. Get out of my house. Get out. Get out, Ronnie. Get out. You two, get the fuck out. Get out. Get out.
Mom? It's Sam. Yeah, yeah, sorry to call so late. Uh, I'm at work. No, 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 everything's okay. I'm just trying to stay positive, you know? Have a positive attitude about things. See, there's this voice. What I listen to. What I call my innermost. My innermost voice that, that tells me what to do. I figure I just gotta listen to that voice, right? I've been working a lot of nights lately. I really like that, you know? Walking around the city at night, you, you look around, listen, smell the air. The whole experience gives you a, a false impression of continuity. The city momentarily becomes a smooth, interrelated system and no longer a series of irrational unrelated images it stands before you in darkness and silence without flaw or excess moments like that moments like that I I fall in love with New York City. I grew up in East New York, in Brooklyn. You know, a real tough 
part of town. So as a kid, I was raised to uh, look out for myself, keep my eyes open for things, you know, know how to protect myself, know how to fight, you know, things like that. So my father, from day one, he told us, uh, he said, don't you ever go looking for trouble? Never. But if trouble comes, if someone's looking to hurt you, someone's looking to hurt you or your family, you do whatever's necessary. And that thought, that, that thought's engraved in the back of my mind every day I go out on the job, do whatever's necessary. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't even know why I want to become a cop in the first place, you know? I think I got the idea from watching TV. And I didn't, I didn't tell nobody either. When I first started thinking about it, I mean, people don't have too much respect for cops where I'm from. Not my neighborhood. I mean, even now, I'm driving, I look up, I see another squad car in my rear view, and I say to myself, what the fuck's this asshole one? You know, it's just ingrained in you. And yeah, sure, there's people out there who say they love you, say they love cops, but for every one of them, there's at least 10 people who are gonna sneer at you or say something underneath their breath when you walk by in uniform. That's just the way it is, and being a cop is just a thankless job in that way. You know, so some guys this leads to, you know, they get into all kinds of bad situations because of the job. Guys who, uh, things become too much for them. They feel guilty for what they've done. They can't eat, they can't sleep, they cry, they get divorced, you know, all sorts of bad stuff. And there's, there's, there's some guys who just dwell on things. They get angry. And it's just hard to let those feelings go, so they just stay with you all the time. But everyone obviously deals with things differently. But Undeniably, very early in your career in the force, there's a loss of innocence involved. You don't come back from that. Good or bad. You just don't look at life again the same way. Thank you. 
kamu hel. I think my thoughts are what started. I start thinking about how fake I am. How fake the world is. And then it hits me. Fort Hamilton. I feel hollow. Brighton Beach. I feel like someone else is in control of my body. Coney Island. At the same time, I know it's really me. In Mars Park. I see my hands on the steering wheel Race. while driving, and it seems as if they belong to someone else. Oh, I become overly aware of the details of things. I start watching people. Madison. Soon, nothing and no one seem real. Manhattan Beach. I look down on myself and Beach. seem unnatural. Like my mind and my body are no longer joined together. Long Beach. It's like I'm living inside a show on television. I can't tell what's real and what's in my mind. White Sands. I have trouble staying connected to my environment. My apartment seems unfamiliar to me. Everything is different. City line. My wife. Cypress Hill. My son. East New York. I don't feel like myself anymore. I don't even sound like me. I become afraid to talk and hear this other person's voice come out. Things I used to enjoy seem meaningless. Flatlands. Life seems meaningless. Georgetown. I've lost my sense of self. Marine Park. I feel no pain. No pleasure. Bill Mason. Just a constantly numb feeling of nothingness. I have constant Bill loud Boston. thoughts. Never-ending fear in the back of my mind and migrates. I feel like I'm not alive. Forest Hills. Like I'm watching life through someone else's eyes. Glendale. Like I'm not really interacting what with real people. They're just machines. Jackson Heights. I feel like I can see the gears turning inside their chests. Long Island City. Everything they say sounds the same to me. Elizabeth. A cycle of Young usual Jesus. thoughts comes to mind. Queens Bridge. How much of a failure I am. Ravenwood. What the hell kind of business I have raising children? Queens. 
I arrive home from work in a trance-like state. Middle Village. Everything around me is silent and distant. Everything traveling in a slowed down and mechanical manner. Sunny side. Takes tremendous effort just to do anything. Wood side. I become sensitive to bright lights. Songs and the radio sound odd. I develop tunnel vision. I'm overcome by intense feelings of deja vu. Like everything happening has happened at some stage before. If I could only concentrate, I could predict exactly what is about to happen next. My peripheral vision disappears. There's a pulsing in my head. Fresh meadows. Along with mixed feelings, euphoria, Fresh pine. intoxication, Glen Oaks. and terror. The North Shore Towers. My whole reality is disjointed and static. Hillcrest. Kew Gardens. Linden Hill. Day is done, gone the sun, from the lakes, from the hills, from the sky, all is well, safely rest. Fading light dims the sight, and a star gems the sky, gleaming bright from afar, 
drawing near falls the night. Thanks and praise for our days neath the sun, neath the stars, neath the sky. As we go, this we know.